Hey everyone, Clyde here. Today we're gonna flush cut the ends of our slabs for the top and bottom of our budget coffee table build. Hey guys, I just wanted to point out that in this video I have a ridiculous COVID haircut. It's long on this side and shaved under this side and it sticks out the back of my hat and it looks ridiculous. But let's try to ignore that even though I brought it up so now you definitely won't be able to because we're gonna build the best dog on coffee table that we can. It's January here in the Pacific Northwest and thus my furnace is running just like it is now. Oh sweet, it turned off. Hopefully it doesn't come back, but if it does, that's what that background noise is. And unfortunately, it's gonna be you know a small distraction. Hopefully it doesn't bother anybody too much. All right, so today we are going to use a square and a straight edge and a marking knife. And then eventually my, whoa, hey there fella. My Japanese pole saw to flush cut the edges of our two slabs, the top and the bottom slab, in order to figure out just how long this table is gonna be. Whichever of these two slabs winds up being the shortest is going to be the longest length that we can possibly have it be because I need the top and bottom to be as near as makes no difference the same length. Um, when we start doing joinery with the side panels and things, we'll need them to not trapezoid in or out at the top or the ends in order to get nice flush fits. Now again, I've mentioned this before, but I am not an expert woodworker. I'm just a person with a few tools who likes to build things in his garage. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. If you come along with me, we should be able to have a pretty good time. So what I'm gonna do here is grab my square and I'll take that and I'm gonna lay it out like so to figure out just how close to the end can I get and cut off the least amount of slab, as it were, uh, on this edge of this piece. And we'll mark that here with our marking knife, carefully. And we'll take our straight edge here, we'll line it up with that entire cut that we just made. It should be a fairly straight line. Ooh, that is really, really close on this end. So I'm gonna actually do that. I'm gonna run this line a little bit longer because the reason I'm gonna do that is this thing is not quite long enough to mark halfway across and then have me flip it over and get the other half. It needs about another half inch or maybe one inch of length, which it simply doesn't have. So we'll use this straight edge. We'll, uh, we'll line it up here as closely as we can with our original line and we'll extend that line about two or three inches. Okay, that's probably enough. It's probably about an inch and a half that I did there. Oh yeah, more than enough. And I can align this with that line and then using this end of the square, draw the rest of the line. There we go. And we're gonna do the same thing on this other end as well. So bear with me here. Do the same maneuver. This end. I don't like doing it like that. We'll put the ruler on this side. It's got more wood supporting it that way. It should make it a little bit more accurate. As I make that mark, and we'll throw the square back up here. I like using the inside, but I might. Eh, I think that'll work actually. Okay, there we go. So after we cut off this excess on this particular slab, let's find out about how long, and we'll just do pretty basic measurement here. This one is gonna be about 28 and 3 eighths of an inch long. 28 and 3 eighths. So if the other one winds up being shorter than that, our table will be shorter than 28 and 3 eighths inches. If it winds up being longer, our table will be 28 and 3 eighths inches long because it'll have to be whatever the length is of the shorter board. So what I'll do next is I'm gonna swap this slab out for the other one, and we'll do the same thing we just did with the square there. All right, let's see.
We've got the one side there. I did have a, a little error that occurred there. When I ran the knife the first time, I got caught in a piece of grain or something and I ran off the ruler. So I need to, you gotta keep your eye on the, uh, on the square there to make sure that when you're running your knife there, you, you don't jump off the edge of this thing because you need that line to be as straight as possible. One technique that can help you not you know wander off the edge of the straight edge you're using whether it's a square or ruler or whatever is not pressing as hard with the knife if you press too hard sometimes you're just putting too much force in there and if your if your knife jumps or if your hand does something weird or if you hit a knot or something in the wood that'll cause you to make a worse mistake a more aggressive mistake by putting too much pressure on the marking knife um, i don't know if that's the case for everybody but it's a trick that i've I've learned and I'm trying to use. I'm not always very good about doing it, however. Sometimes I don't take my own advice. I think this right here is about as close as we're going to be able to get. Ah! See? I was pushing too hard there, too. But that's not too bad. Okay. I feel like I'm sort of doing this one left-handed. One way I could alleviate some of that concern is I could flip the slab around and do it the other way, the same way I did that side, which might have been better. Um, in this case, though, it looks like I'm coming out okay. Whoa, this, uh, this one is off by a little bit more. It feels like I have to cut off more of this. Um, side, but maybe that's not true. So if we take a close look here, the first slab, I started measuring at 10 inches just because sometimes the end of a ruler isn't always cut perfectly. But right there at 10 inches, if we run all the way down here, we are at about just under, like a, like a line width under 38 and 3 eighths inches. Let's see if I can get in real close on that for you. It might be kind of blurry. If we bring our ruler down to the next one as well, and set it up at right at 10 inches just like so we can run down here and look at that just out of pure happenstance we happen to be right at 38 and 3 8 inches again that's uh like right there is where the line is kind of hard to see in this lighting so we actually lucked out really really well as long as i can cut these two slabs straight i should have no problem making the measurements work now when I said 38 and 3 8 inches, that's because we actually started measuring at the 10 inches mark. That means that these two slabs are truly 28 and 3 8 inches long. Uh, next what we're going to do is figure out how to get these things clamped down on the bench. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do here. Uh, when it comes to work holding large pieces like this, my shop does not have all of the best facilities. But we'll come up with something that will work pretty well and uh, then we'll get to cut. I can use this vise here. Maybe slightly pivot it. To hold us close. better shooting angle for you so we can watch the cutting up a little bit closer I think hang with me all right so we got ourselves a new camera angle here I'm gonna mark a line across the top of this so that I can use two lines one across the top and one down the front or you know like right here but on my side to help me line up my saw as we're making the cut so I'm gonna grab another square one of my small boys 
I've got a nice line there. I, I went against, so it's a pull saw. It does its cutting action on the pull stroke, but I gave it a little push, and that push got my kerf started. So I've got a little kerf going here. Now I'm just gonna start sawing like I normally would. And I'm gonna try to keep it lined up here as I go. Occasionally I'll blow the sawdust out of the way so that I can, you know, see what I'm doing. Um, and I'm gonna put this garbage can here right below to catch as much of the sawdust as possible so I can vacuum a little bit less later on. It's gonna be a long cut, so I might speed this up on the real video. You can actually see light through it. That's how thin it is in some of these spaces here at the end. But look at that, we cut off this unevenness. And we are, oh wow, it just, <laughs> just cracked apart. Um, and we are left with a pretty straight cut here. I would not call this perfect. Um, it bows out here just a little bit at the end. I'll swing the camera around and show you guys. So I'm hoping you can see this. The lighting is a little dim, but round about here, you might not be able to, but I wandered a little bit that way of my line. For the moment, it looks pretty good, but uh, obviously we'll keep working that issue until it is just right. It is far better than it was just moments ago when we had this kind of an edge, right? So it's all about incremental improvements and working toward where we wanna be. So I'm gonna take this thing out of the vise now, we'll flip it around and we'll do the other side. And I did manage to nick my table that's my own fault, I guess. All right. Let me get these guys out of here. Okay, slabby. Little slabby, little, little slabby, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Gonna mark out this edge, grab our saw here. Whew. All right, so this side we in, have encountered an issue, uh, one that I didn't expect. This is new. The way that I cut each one of these individual slats that make up this slab, some of them were cut straighter than others because I cut them all by hand and I cut them fairly quickly knowing I was gonna do this. However, when I measured out how much of this I needed to cut off, I didn't think about the fact that some of the slats were gonna have slightly different angles as they stack together. So I'm gonna bring it down close. If we look right here, we can see some irregularities in those ends, which means we're gonna have to tidy some of that up. I'll probably use a block plane or something like that to bring down some of those high spots later on. Obviously I've got some divots and things like this here that are gonna to need to be handled, but we're gonna handle that with the regular planing. But this board, or this slab I should say, it's better than it used to be, but it is not perfect. So anyhow, I think what we've done is made a little bit of progress. I also feel like this cut here, rather than being a perfect perpendicular 90 degree cut, I think there was a slight angle to it as I went down. Excuse me, which means that this back half is a little bit longer than the front half, the side that faces that's, that I'm on. So we're gonna have to deal with that as well. And we'll use some squares and some planing techniques and things like that to square that up a little bit later in the series. All right, well, let's get this one out of here and work on the next one. I told you I was gonna share with you my mistakes. Um, I dropped it. Essentially, uh, yeah, big old ding right there, and a big, big, big ding right there, which means I'm gonna have to overcome that with some planing, and or maybe turn this into this one right here. Really sucks. We'll probably wind up planing down a bunch of this edge, but 
I wasn't planning on having to go that deep. And now I have to, especially because this, if you remember me talking in the live stream about this board, this was my favorite board. And I just now noticed that it landed on my little garbage can, my bucket from Lowe's and broke that. So we do have a casualty, unfortunately. It still works, it's still a bucket. You know, it's still gonna hold garbage like it does right now. Uh, but unfortunately it'll never, it'll never wear a lid again. Thank you for your service. So I'm trying something a little bit different here. I've taken one of those, one of those clamps, the, the old timey wooden clamps like you see here. I used a hold fast on this side to hold it down. And on the other side, I've also got a hold fast holding down this old clamp. And the way that that's working is, uh, this is holding the slab upright and the hold fast is holding the clamp to the bench. That is gonna allow this thing to be pretty firm. In fact, let me turn you this way so you can see what I'm talking about. Ooh, baby. So there we go. Now we're pretty firm, firm enough to do the cutting that I'm gonna need to do here. Um, and we'll talk a lot about hold fast because once we get to planning, I'm gonna be using them a bunch and there'll be plenty of opportunity for you to see how they work and why they're cool and maybe some of their drawbacks as well. But first things first, we are going to take a cut on this guy. So we'll do the same thing that we did on the other one with the exception of not dropping it. I'm gonna grab a square out of the old kit here and we'll mark it up. It's not any better. There we go. I'm gonna finish up this last cut right here. And then when we're done with that, we'll review all the progress we've made today and talk about what our next steps are. Holy crap. Cut number four, complete. Okay, putting a few tools away as we go. Well, that is pretty freaking rad. <laughs> uh, perfect they are not, but fairly flat, I would say they definitely are. And here's what I'm hoping is true as well. Well, it's not true. Okay, so we cut the ends off of our two slabs. We made them relatively flat. They're flesh-ish cut. And I said I was gonna share successes and failures. And so let's take a look at where we're at. In fact, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna flip these two real quick and I'll show you what went wrong today. And we'll also talk about how we're gonna fix it. I'm gonna bring you down here. I'm just gonna grab the whole tripod. But look at that, when we measured these things, they were both about 28 and 3 8 inches. And now look, I'm still getting the hang of these hand tools. This backside, I lined it up so it looks pretty good. But you can still tell those aren't 90 degree cuts. It's not the end of the world, but it does mean that there is some imperfection in this project at this moment. And that's okay, it's gonna be that way and we're gonna cut dovetails out of these ends and things like that anyhow. But now we know how long our table is. It is about the length of these slabs, maybe an eighth of an inch difference on one end or another. It's like 28 and 7 sixteenths, right? So this one you can tell, and in fact, if you, know, if you look closely, you can tell I cut on the outside of the cut line. So there's a little extra material on this end. Now this top portion is about right. It's about 28 and 3 eighths, which is what it should be. The other end, this, the far side 
of the top. So what we'll do is we'll leave those imperfections there for now. And the reason for that is I've still got to cut dovetails out of these. I've still got to plane these down to where they're fairly smooth on both sides. And when I, once I cut the dovetails, I'll cut them a little bit deeper than I need to so that the interlocking pieces will be a little proud. That is, they will have a prow. They will stick out beyond the edge of the other plane like my fingers are doing thusly. And then we'll clean up any of that excess. And that's how we'll get rid of all of that and we'll smooth it all down to where it's flat. Some of that will be done with planes, some of that will be done with sanding. You know, I'm, I'm probably not quite to a skill level where I can do everything, which is planes. Um, but you'll see the techniques that I use and you'll critique them if you wish. Uh, but hopefully it's just interesting to hang out and work in the shop together. I thank you guys a ton for coming into the shop here and hanging out while we work on this project together. We'll keep going on this. Next stage is going to be to smooth the tops here. I thought I might get into some planing, but I'll be honest with you, all that sawing has kind of tuckered me out. Plus, I got a friend who called who needs a hand with some stuff. So I'm going to head out to take care of those things and to rest up, but we'll be back with another Clyde Builds here soon, probably next weekend. Okay, you guys didn't need to see that. <laughs>